the reflection coefficient for a wave incident on a PEC is minus one. So we should expect to see a perfect reflection of the wave off of the PEC. Of course, the solution from our FEM model won't be perfect, but it should be reasonably good at 20 elements per wavelength. In order to imagine what the magnitude of the Z will look like, we need to know how the incident and reflected waves interact with each other. You might remember from an undergraduate electromagnetics class like ECE 3300 that the interaction of two plane waves at the same frequency propagating in opposite directions produces a standing wave. Here is a diagram that nicely illustrates how a standing wave is produced from two plane waves propagating in opposite directions. The blue waveform is the incident wave propagating to the left and the green waveform is the reflected wave propagating to the right. Let's assume the PEC is right here in the middle of this diagram. You can see right in the middle here that the green and the blue waveforms are always equal and opposite to each other, which is what we expect right at the surface of the PEC. So the total tangential E field is always zero over all time at the surface of the PEC. The red curve is the summation of the blue and the green waves, and the red waveform oscillates up and down, but it looks stationary, meaning it doesn't look like it's moving to the left or to the right. This is where the word standing wave comes from. It looks like it's standing still, even though it's made up of two waves that are moving. So red here is the resulting standing wave of the incident plus the reflected. Since the red curve accounts for both the incident and the reflected waves, we would expect the magnitude and the phase of the EZ fields in a finite element model to be consistent with the behavior of this red curve. This shows, of course, what's happening in the time domain. If we pick one position along the standing wave near the surface of the PEC, say right around here, then the over time, the wave traces out a sinusoid in time, having a specific magnitude and phase. Move a little bit over to the right, say right here, and the wave traces out uh, it's also a sinusoid in time, but with a different magnitude, meaning the magnitude of the EZ field would look like this over the first half wavelength. It would peak out at two or double the value of the incident wave, and we would expect this magnitude behavior to repeat over the next half wavelength. So that would be one full wavelength and three lambda over two. Since our grid only extends out here to 1.5 wavelengths, so we'll expect to see a total of three peaks. With regards to the phase, all along this section within the first half of a wavelength right here, you can see that the standing waves moves, moves up and down together in phase, meaning we'll have a constant phase. So here's the magnitude, and here is our phase plot. Over the first half wavelength, we'd expect the phase to be constant, and if we use the surface of the PEC as a phase reference, which has zero degrees, then the phase over the first half of the wavelength will be 90 degrees. And then starting at a half wavelength away from the PEC, the magnitude here uh, over this distance has the same behavior as in the first half wavelength from the PEC, but this part of the wave is moving 180 degrees out of phase with the first part. So we're going to be down at 90, 90 minus 90 degrees here up until one wavelength. And then the third half wavelength from the PEC is in phase with the first half wavelength segment. So we're gonna be back here at 90 degrees. So overall, we can expect our phase plot to look like this. And indeed, when you run your code, hopefully you see something like this. Here is the scatter plot that I obtained for the magnitude of the EZ field at the nodes of the elements. And on the right here is the phase. I'm plotting versus wavelengths and not node numbers, 
Plotting versus node numbers can be useful to us as we build and test the model, but most people you might show this plot to will better understand your results and be able to relate it to reality better if you plot versus wavelengths, as we've done here, or in versus meters, rather than node numbers. You'll also notice that I plotted the first node at x equals zero. You should do the same since we defined the PEC to be at x equals zero. Now what about in between the nodes? We've only plotted the EZ values at the nodes. Can we expand our plot to include locations between the nodes? Well, it turns out we can, and we can do this because we've assumed linear interpolation between the nodes when we derived our FEM model. We assumed in our formulation that EZ changes linearly between the nodes. And as a result, when we plot EZ, we can linearly interpolate the value of EZ between the nodes. Now this is automatically done for us by MATLAB when we use the plot command. So let's try using the plot command. Here are the two plots again, plotted using plot, so that we have linear interpolation between the nodes. Here we can see that the magnitude of EZ is a little bit choppy, especially near the peaks where the value of EZ is changing rapidly. Also, the magnitude doesn't go all the way to zero, which we can see here at one wavelength and 1.5 wavelengths from the PEC. Do you have any ideas on how we can improve on our result?